Okay, so we've got a positive charge and a negative charge, and we're evaluating their net electric field at this upper point, P. First off, remember that electric field lines point away from positive charges and towards negative charges. So because of this positive charge on the right, creating electric field lines pointing away from it, that means that there will be, from the positive charge, an electric field line pointing away towards the upper left. And from this negative charge, since there are going to be electric field lines pointing towards it, that means that at point P, there is an electric field line pointing towards the bottom left. So those are the two electric field lines affecting point P. And notice that there's a little bit of symmetry here, where we can see that their vertical components are pointing in opposite directions. And with the same magnitudes, since the charge magnitudes of the two particles and the distance between those particles and point P are the same. So those vertical components are going to cancel out. So all that's left are the horizontal components. The horizontal component of the positive charge is pointing to the left, and the horizontal component from the negative charge is pointing to the left. So these horizontal components are going to magnify each other. Now remember that the formula for the electric field strength is equal to the Coulomb constant times the magnitude of the charge setting up the field divided by the square of the distance between the point setting up the field and the point we're analyzing. Since we've established that we're only concerned with horizontal components, we'll also multiply this by the cosine of the vector's angle. So in that formula, r is represented by this distance from p to q, and this distance from p to negative q. Because of the symmetry of this situation, both of those distances are going to be the same value r. And theta is represented by this angle right here, because that's the angle that the field is at from the horizontal. Now we can find values for both r and the cosine of theta by treating this region as a right triangle and using our geometry math accordingly. Because the problem tells us that this bottom leg is equal to 3 meters and this vertical leg is equal to 4 meters. So we can find the value of r by applying the Pythagorean theorem which states that the square of the hypotenuse of the triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other legs. So 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared plus 3 squared is equal to 25, so r is equal to the square root of 25, which is 5. So r has a value of 5. Also note that the cosine of an angle is equal to its adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So this cosine theta term can be more simply written as 3, the adjacent leg, divided by the hypotenuse, 5. So an easier way we can represent that electric field formula is kq divided by 5 squared multiplied by 3 fifths. Now this will be a good formula for one of these two horizontal components, but remember that there are two components we're adding up here, one from the positive charge and one from the negative charge. But fortunately for us, due to the way this situation is laid out, the total electric field in the x direction is just going to be this exact value twice, since this formula will work for either of the charges and we have to add them up. So in my formula for the total electric field, I'm just going to take the formula we just laid out and multiply the whole thing by 2. So 2 kq divided by 5 squared multiplied by 3 fifths. And that is going to be our final solution to this problem. So that's 2 times the Coulomb constant, which has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9, multiplied by the charge on one of the particles, which is given... Both charges have a magnitude of 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs multiplied by 3, all divided by 5 squared times 5. And if we put that into a calculator, then we find a net electric field of 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 10 newtons per coulomb. 
And so that is our answer to part A of the problem. Now you might be tempted to say that this answer is wrong and that it should be negative because we can clearly see that the net field is pointing to the left in the negative direction on the x-axis, but because the problem is only asking for the magnitude of the net field, that means we make it positive because you can't have a negative magnitude. Part B actually asks for the direction, which we can see, it, again, it's towards the left, but the problem specifically asks for the direction relative to the positive direction of the x-axis. And when we have things phrased like that, like relative to an axis, that usually means we want an angle. So since the vector, the net vector, is pointing to the left, and we have a net x-axis pointing in the exact opposite direction, that means we're basically looking for an angle from the positive axis all the way over to the other side, basically over a straight line, which means the angle is 180 degrees. So the direction is 180 degrees from the positive x-axis. And that is it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.